everyone, I'm Rich Nation. And I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi, and this is Shell Point Today for Wednesday, February 18th. On today's show, Herb Sklar will talk about his academy class, The Art of the Self-Portrait. Johannes Tiesbeer will share some of the beautiful wood carving, and we'll hear about the upcoming Legacy Seminar on Identity Theft. But first, we want to let you know that at tomorrow's meeting of the Computer Club, Mike Peterson from Computer Medics will explain the similarities and differences among laptops, tablets, smartphones, and other computerized devices. If you want to learn about technology in simple terms, this meeting is for you. Mike will answer your questions regarding your digital device or upgrading to a new one. The meeting takes place at 2.15 in the Manatee Room on the island. If you think computerized devices are just more trouble than they're worth, and you'd rather have a good old-fashioned book with paper pages, then don't forget the annual library book sale that goes on today from 9 to 4 in the library lounge just outside the library in the Resident Activity Center. They also have CDs and movies. It's popular, so get over there for the best selection. You may recall seeing Herb Scalar in the video at the gala talking about how much he enjoys helping people learn how to create beautiful things. He's hard at it with this class on the art of the self-portrait coming up. Herb gave Terry Kolath a preview of what this academy class will be like. Hello, I'm Terry Kolath. I'm here today with Herb Sklar to talk about a different take on the self-portrait, a course coming up, a lecture course plus in the academy. Thanks for joining me, Hi, Herb. You're more than welcome. I enjoyed so much coming to the class that you taught on the self-portrait. Mm seeing people start with a photograph of themselves and turn it into a self-portrait. It was very, very, very exciting. Well, that's going to be the highlight of the lecture. It really is. Uh, I'm going to start off by talking about uh, why uh, famous artists did so many self-portraits. The obvious reason, of course, is it was a cheap uh, model fee. <laughs> you know? And if you were working on new techniques, it was a way of doing it. Yeah. And we'll see Rembrandt. Uh, he did it throughout his whole life. And uh, uh, Frida Kahlo did it when she was sick physically when she had an automobile accident, and Van Gogh did it when he was going through his emotional and nervous breakdown, you know. And and, and then we'll, we'll discuss the different kind of self-portraits. Most people say, self-portrait, I can look at it and tell who it is. Well, it's not so. That, that's realistic, but there's mm. other kinds that, um, uh, like um, Marc Chagall, he, he didn't show his face, but he told a story about his life. And that was his style of self-portrait. So we'll go through all that. But I think the really the highlight is going to be six students who, for the first time in their life, painted their own self-portrait. And, and they're going to be there, and the pictures will be there, and they'll tell their story, what it was like doing that. Well, I love your lectures on portraits. Uh, we've had a number of them, and they've been really, really, really valuable. And so, too set the stage by giving a lecture and showing us these various artists in the history of art who have done self-portraits will get us all ready for the questions we have. Why did they do it? You told us because it was a, a cheap model. But also, what was the value? Yeah, that was a little glib answer, I think. Really, I think that they did it also to work out, out techniques right. and, and to maybe discover a lot about themselves. And, and that's going to be interesting because I'd never asked those questions to the students uh -huh. what they found out about themselves doing their own portrait. I'm going to leave that up to you. Well, I think even seeing a portrait of, of, our, of oneself is very surprising because we don't really see ourselves realistically sometimes, mm -hmm. do we? I mean, even women who spend more time in the mirror doing makeup and things, right. we can sometimes be surprised. Why is that? You know, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But I know the feeling, and I know I've felt that way yeah. when, when I've done my self-portrait. And I looked at it, and I said, was I mad? Why am I looking this way? Was I happy? Mm -hmm. and, and probably I was. You know, the emotion does come through. So really, we're, we're going to learn a lot in this lecture. We're going to learn um, who these artists are, and we're going to see how they see themselves, right. which is pretty interesting. And then we're going to see how some of our friends and neighbors went through the process that these famous artists went through and came up with some pretty wonderful self-portraits. 
Yes, they did. They really are wonderful. And it yeah. was fun going in week after week. That's what you used to drop in and you would say. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and they were so surprised. I, I don't think one person thought it was going to go as well. On the first day. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think they were a little intimidated, but they just yeah. got into it and into it. And I think by the third week, you were able to see who they were painting. You really could. You yeah. didn't even have to have them there. That's right. And you could see who yeah. it was. Fascinating. Yeah. What was that? What is it like to help somebody bring themselves out of a piece of paper? Well, I tell you, it was probably the one class that I worked so hard on. I just wanted to su succeed so much, and I felt so good about it. Well, I hope that you'll take the opportunity to join Herb Sklar for another one of his great lectures, and then take the opportunity to watch as your friends and neighbors unveil their own self-portraits. Have a little dessert and a great time. Shell Point residents are busy with creative activities all over the property. Some are just getting started on something that has recently caught their fancy, and others are masters who have been pursuing their passion for many years. And there's no lack of amazing results. An example of one such master is Johannes Tiesver, who has won competitions and delighted his family with many beautiful gifts adorned with his skillful wood carving. Before I retired, I was uh, working as a carpenter in New York City most of the time. All kinds of things, uh, up in the skyscraper, up on the bridges, and on the, on the piers, and uh, everywhere. I went to school uh, when I was 16, and uh, I, I, we did work a little bit in the shop there, and then I did some carving. But, so I forgot it into, uh, in, the, in the 90s, I started doing it. I started out making uh, some elephants and the doves, and uh, this is one of my first carvings. And uh, the teacher said, he's going to make two bookends. He said, no, I'm going to make two horses. <clears throat> so uh, he said, it's hard to do. I said, I didn't know that. So that's how that was made. There's an elephant. When I took it home and my grandson saw it, he said, Grandpa, that's an elephant. That's the, that's the best compliment I ever had, I think. But then uh, I went to uh, a carving course. There I was introduced to this kind of carving. It's called an Arcantus carving, and uh, it goes back in history a long time. It's often used in cathedrals and, and churches, a uh, lot of different, and it's beautiful. And it is even on your dollar bill, in the back of your dollar bill. There's a lot of acanthus carving there too. The acanthus carving is, is done by hand tools. You only use hand tools, sharp hand tools. You get them sharp as you can. And uh, the technique is all in, the, in your wrist. You just turn your wrist and, and you get it perfect every time. You go one first over at one time and then you go over again and, and because you don't know how deep you're going to go at different places. Uh, a sixteenth of an inch can make a difference in, in the appearance. So sometimes not easy to do because if you have many layers on top of each other, like I have in the mirror, there's, there's three or four layers on top of each other, of course. But, but otherwise, it is all in the wrist. Best one is, is the one I use the most. Pretty stable, there's no grain in it, hardly any grain, so you can carve both ways. And, uh, and it is, it's a good carving wood. And uh, if, if, if the wood is, is harvested in the, <clears throat> in the winter time, it's better. Uh, then there's no sap in the wood. But, so, but sometimes you would just have to take what you get. And all of these different uh, curves and everything. Uh, you gotta come out, and it is not easy to do when it's so small. You use smaller tools. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. Well, I always like to have a fireplace, so. Uh, I made this drawing on the fireplace, and when I hear about the snow up north, I put the fireplace on just to 
showed him some support. <laughs> Fireplace bellow. So uh, they, they work pretty good. And uh, I made some of them to my children and some of my friends. My uncle made that picture. We happened to buy it in Norway and uh, we liked it so much, but the frame was bad. So, so uh, I made another frame. These chairs I made from a walnut tree I had in my backyard in New York. And I, I cut that out with a chainsaw and I made it two chairs of it. And it's hard to carve, so I put the salmon in the weed swinging in and swimming in the weed here, so. These are two different spoons. So when somebody comes and visits me, there's big talkers. That's the way they, that's the one they get to eat with. And that's a cuckoo clock. It, uh, the cuckoo, the birds come out here every hour. On this particular one, I have a quartz, quartz clock in here, and that's, that's more stable than, than that one from the Black Forest in Germany. And uh, this is, these are just made, that's the decoration. This board is called a, a mangle board. And uh, they used it in, in olden times for when they're going to iron sheets and buy the friction forth and back. That was enough to, to uh, to, uh, to iron sh sheets, because they didn't have electric, so. And another thing they used it for is, if somebody wanted to marry a girl, and if, if she didn't accept it, that was a no. That is from, uh, uh, the drawing is from uh, 1894, that one. There's different uh, the sh shape of, of people in there and things. This mirror is, is made in a cantus carving, and it is uh, it's kind of complicated, but it took me a long time to do it. And uh, this, um, the drawing from this I get from Europe. I did this because I just wanted to do it. I, I didn't know how much work there was involved, but off and on and over a year. This one was in the best of show. First price ribbon. The Southwest Florida wood carver show. When you make a carving like this, there's a lot of people that wanted to buy it. But it's not for sale. It is like one of your arm or your hand or something. It becomes a part of you after a while. If you own something as unique and beautiful as one of Johannes's masterpieces, it would be terrible to have it stolen. But something else could become stolen that would likely cause you much more grief than that, your identity. It sounds absurd, but the danger is very real and the ramifications can be devastating. The Legacy Foundation wants to help you avoid such a nightmare and they are putting on a seminar about the subject. Jeff Corey came by the studio with some friends to tell you about it. Hi, I'm Jeff Corey from the Legacy Foundation here at Shell Point, and I'm joined today by Dennis Landfried and Anna Smith, both from Finemark National Trust Bank, and we're here to talk about the identity theft epidemic that's come across our country and why Shell Point residents need to be concerned. So Dennis, could you please tell us what uh, things do we need to be concerned about with identity theft? Well, Jeff, in, in the past, we partnered with the Sheriff's Department locally, and uh, identity theft is rampant, um, and it just scares the heck out of us because we're running across um, incidents with our clients uh, almost weekly now. Um, Anna, maybe you can share with the group uh, some, of the, some of the things that we're seeing out there. Of course. Um, I have seen in the bank here at Shell Point with our clients um, things that range from the normal that you see every day on television regarding debit cards, for example. Other things that we see are phone calls, um, intervention on their computers, 
all of which are alarming to them and they don't really know how to handle those things. So they come to us as an advocate, what should I do with this? And it is extremely rampant and as Dennis mentioned, it's almost daily and weekly that I don't speak to someone about a potential issue regarding identity theft. Mm. So what, what are some of the things that people can do right off the bat to help them protect themselves and their identity? Well, good, good question, Jeff. I think, <clears throat> I think uh, making sure that you change your passwords with your computer, um, try not to use your debit card. Um, you know, those are some things that, that we see. Um, we're, we, we don't want to give the whole presentation away today, but um, identity theft, um, according to the sheriff, um, Florida is the number one state uh, across the country for identity theft. Uh, Georgia is number two. Uh, Florida has 10 times the incidence, and, and uh, Cape Coral is the epicenter of... Coral's epicenter is taken over Naples, believe it or not. And our retirement communities, particularly, are very suspect to it. Um, the people committing fraud assume that because these individuals live in retirement communities, A, they're number one, they're very vulnerable so they're more suspect to it. And number two, they just assume that they have a lot of money. Mm. Therefore, they think they're prime targets, and they are. If, if someone suspects that their, you know, their identity has been compromised, what would you suggest they should do? The first call or? <clears throat> well, I would say first, talk to someone that might have some knowledge that could give you some good, solid advice. And that's a first step, always, you know. Don't be afraid to ask the question. Don't be afraid to say, can you take a look at this? I'm not sure about this. And that's why I always tell a client, let me take a look at it before mm. you do anything. But don't accept phone calls you don't know who the person is or why they're calling you. And don't give any personal information away on a telephone. Yeah, exactly. We, we want our clients, if, if they feel like um, they've been subject to identity theft to call us. Yes. Uh, we have resources at the bank that we utilize um, to, to try to protect them. You know, we have a bank secrecy officer that's uh, his sole job to, uh, to make sure that all of our clients um, are protected. Uh, we have an IT officer that, uh, from a computer uh, standpoint, his job is to make sure that our clients are secure with their logons and, and they're not subject to any identity theft. Um, Do our residents need to worry about checking accounts being compromised and um, you know, we talk, heard about FDIC insurance. Do we, do we need to worry about someday we might wake up and our account's gone and the money's gone? And Well, I think Finemark is a pretty solid bank. So um, for our clients, I don't think that's an issue. But um, we can speak to our clients about other avenues that the bank offers to them that can give them coverage beyond the typical FDIC coverage. And as well, about titling and how that impacts your FDIC coverage. So I think from that perspective, they should feel very, very comfortable with FIMARC. Um, from other avenues, are they protected? Um, we certainly can provide them with the tools and the resources, as Dennis mentioned, and aid them. If, in fact, they've really had an issue of fraud, um, we have brought in in the past, we'll bring the sheriff's departments here, we'll help them to file the appropriate paperwork, and place the necessary um, blockage on their accounts to prevent future fraud. And it may include closing those accounts down and opening new ones for them. Mm. Great. Anything else, uh, Dennis, our seminar coming up uh, later this month on the 25th? Yeah, yeah, I think it. Uh, when we had the sheriff's department here, Jeff, we uh, the sheriff talked about a lot of facts and figures as it relates to identity theft, and um, and we're going to talk more about some of the stories, uh, the war stories, if you will, um, that we've heard from our clients, um, or maybe that our clients have been subject to. Um, we want to share those and float those out there because a lot of them seem real. Uh, to the client, and we want our clients to be able to identify that um, they're be trying to be defrauded. Mm. And sometimes the message is a message they've heard before, but what we've found is that you never can drive the message home enough, because the more times you hear it, the more you become aware of it, and or some new little thing resonates with them that they didn't pick up the last time they heard the message. So it can't be said enough. Great. Yeah, I think, I think one of the issues, Jeff, and I'll make this final point, is uh, technology has progressed so rapidly. 
and technology security is lagging way behind, mm -hmm. and um, it just can't keep up with all the new uh, new things that are coming out. So people are more vulnerable than they've ever been um, because we've never had this much technology before. So right. it's a scary time. I know that uh, the residents of Shell Point um, and, and other retirement communities are very, very fearful mm. of identity theft and want to do everything that they can to protect themselves. Great. Well, I'd like to thank Dennis and Anna for being with us here today and invite you to our seminar on February 25th at the Grand Cypress Room in the Woodlands. Learn more about identity theft and the epidemic uh, that we're experiencing here. So please come join us 10 a.m. on February 25th at the Grand Cypress Room. And now it's time to cover all of today's happenings, Academy News, Menus, and Village Church Connections. Hello and welcome to the Happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Caitlin Van Scoy and I'm here with Bev Chanley and we're going to tell you all about activities that are happening at Shell Point today. We start bright and early at 7.45 with men's Bible study in the Osprey Room on the island. We move to 8 a.m. We have men's match play doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. And Lily and Company Jewelers will be here for their weekly service at 8.45 in the Resident Activity Center. At 9 a.m., Jirasi Travel will be here in the Egret Room on the island. Also at 9 a.m., Watercolor Group with Phil Hilton will be down in the Art Studio. It's down in the Island Tunnel. At 9.15, the Card Making and Scrapbooking Group will be in the Tarpon Room on the island. At 10 a.m., Men's Match Play Doubles Tennis will be at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. At 10.15, the Model Yacht Sailing Club will be at the Commons Lake at the Woodlands. The Women's Ministries Global Outreach will meet in the Social Center on the island at 10.15. And at 11 o'clock, we have Neuropathy Group meeting in the Oak Room of the Woodlands. We finish our morning off with an 11.30 Health Connections class, Agility and Flexibility. That's in the Health Club and it's currently full. Here's Bev for our afternoon activities. Thank you, Caitlin. We're going to start with chess being played at, in the Library Lounge on the island at 1 o'clock. And at 1.30, the model train room will be open from tours. They'll be open from 1.30 to 3.30. 1.45, we have a Health Connections class, Balance and Mobility Training Level 1 in the Health Club. That's currently full. The Knitters Anonymous group will be in the Osprey Room at 2.15. At 2.30, Jazz and Stuff will be down at the Grand Cypress Room. Head on down there and listen to those folks. They do a great job. At 3 o'clock, we have the Bible Study in the Community Room of King's Crown. Also at 3 o'clock, we have a Health Connections class, Pilates Stretch. That's in the Health Club. And our last 3 o'clock activity is Memory Care Group in the Conference Room of the Behavioral Center at the, on the island. We have another Health Connections class at 3.30. This one is Aqua Agility and Conditioning. That's at the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. Pickleball will be at the Pickleball Courts at 4 o'clock. 4.30 is the time, indoor bocce. That's set up down in the health club on the island. We have a 5.45 church choir rehearsal at the Village Church. We round out our evening at 7.15 with prayer and praise at the Village Church. So nice to see you here today, and we will see you right back here tomorrow. Hello, I'm Terry Colath with your Academy information for Wednesday. At 9 o'clock, scrapbooking with a purpose continues in the Sable Room of the Woodlands. At 9.45, Travel the World Virtually continues in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. At 1 o'clock, Intermediate Bridge continues in the Game Room of the Woodlands. At 3 o'clock, Word Processing Prep School continues in the Computer Center at the Woodlands. I'd like to tell you about some new classes coming tomorrow. Academy on the Go, number four, get behind the scenes at the expanded Minnesota Twins Stadium will begin with court pickup for those who have signed up. The Art of the Self-Portrait with Herb Sklar and several guest surprises. Menus for Wednesday, February 18th. In the crystal, the platter is Salisbury steak with mashed potatoes and carrots. For dinner, it's the pasta buffet for $13.95. The soup is chicken florentine. In the Island Cafe on Wednesday, lunch is chicken parmesan sandwich with a side salad for $7.25. And for dinner, it's fried shrimp for $8.25. 
In the Palm Grill, you can have your choice of grilled sirloin for $16.95 or stuffed shells for $13.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, I'm Randy Woods, and here it is February, and we are looking forward to another season of praise ministry with Theater for the Thirsty, a presentation entitled My Name is Daniel. Jeremiah and Vanessa Gamble are the actors who make up the drama Theater for the Thirsty, and they will be performing their newest musical entitled My Name is Daniel here at the Village Church on Sunday evening, February 22nd at 6.15. Now with a lion's den and a fiery furnace, I don't want to confuse you with a TV show called The Survivor. No, this is a new take on the biblical story of Daniel, complete with music adapted from selections that we come to know and love from the movie entitled The Sound of Music. My Name is Daniel is a presentation by Jeremiah and Vanessa Gamble, and they are a married couple of professional actors who make their living on stage and screen. Their home is in the St. Paul, Minneapolis area, and they live there with their three children. Together, they create music, theater, and laughter. For this performance here at the Village Church, they are joined by actor Nathaniel Norton, who is also a graduate of Bethel University with a degree in theater. Jeremiah and Vanessa Gamble have been involved in professional theater in the Twin Cities, both on camera and on stage for over 12 years. And their passion is creating and performing original works that inspire, entertain, and educate through the ministry of their theater company, Theater for the Thirsty. They're also members of the Gamble family. For those of you from the St. Paul, Minnesota area will know the Gamble family for their 25-year tradition of music and theater in the Twin Cities. Both Jeremiah and Vanessa are graduates of Bethel University, and they have degrees in theater and music. Well, their presentation is entitled, My Name is Daniel. You'll want to get your tickets now to be part of this presentation on Sunday evening, February 22nd at 6.15. Tickets are $10 and available at the church office anytime and can be charged to your resident account. Just call the office at 454-2147. It's going to be a wonderful, inspirational, and evening filled with levity and music as we welcome Theater for the Thirsty in this presentation. My name is Daniel. Get your tickets. Be sure to join us. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow when we'll hear about a walk for a good cause, the Pancreatic Cancer Walk. And Lee County Sheriff Mike Scott will be here to talk about fundraising fraud. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Wednesday, February 18th. I'm Rich Nation. And I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. From all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Oh,